Hello and welcome to the Roadrunner Predictions. I'm going to go over a couple basketball games. Um, all college today. I'm doing uh, Penn State, Nitty Lions versus Indiana Hoosiers. Uh, Penn State is 20-6 and six, and the Indiana Hoosiers are 17-9. and nine. I think uh, Hoosiers are, are a pretty decent team. But uh, today I'm going with Penn State. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going with Indiana plus one. But uh, I think most people might be leaning on Penn State, especially since um, they played earlier this year and uh, Penn State walked away with a 64-49 win. That's a difference of 15 points. And you're thinking, okay, so where's this all coming from? Uh, from the field goal and and uh, three-point, these teams are very, very the same, almost identical on the stat board. Um, the only difference is three-point, is 33% for Penn State, and it's uh, uh, the average for Indiana Hoosiers is 32. But when you mix in the home advantage, now you're getting plus two points to uh, Indiana Hoosiers. And I like uh, teams that are coming off of a deadbeat loss for, like that in their previous matchup. Uh, Penn State almost played their average uh, a little bit below in field goal and outside the arc. When, on their last meet to where Indiana played horrendous, only shooting 18% from the three. I'm sorry, only making 18% of their threes. And their field goal was under 10 points or 10% as well. So that's a big difference. And if they just play on average, not even elevated, just average, they should be able to cover the spread. And uh, I have Indiana walking away with three points, and they're, uh, they're uh, getting plus one at home. So first game... Goes to Indiana plus one. Now I'm going into uh, a matchup that I'm really excited about. Hopefully they can keep the momentum going. Uh, uh, Butler Bulldogs are headed to uh, face a number 15 Creighton team. The spread is at five and a half now, and I'm still taking Creighton on it. So we have Creighton walk away. I have them guesstimation or uh, estimated win at 10 points. Uh, last previous matchup actually went to Butler, 71-57, to and they won by 14 points. But the stats were so bad for Creighton that game. Creighton shot only 18% from the arc, and that is not like them. They, are also, they love a, a, a three-point game, and they averaged 38%. So that's a difference of 20, and that's huge. Uh, but that's not the only thing. Creighton shot below they're averaged by 8% inside the paint, and the CU has been hot lately. So we're going to ride that momentum to where uh, Butler shot a little bit under in their last game in both categories, but not enough to make the difference. So you're talking majority of that points gone just in the 3%. Um, if you really think about it, uh, if if you were to take the value on Butler th at the 5.5 points, I would understand this is a little. I'm just being a little more biased, taking Creighton at five and a half. Um, I do have them winning by ten, but it would not be. Sh I would not be shocked by any means if Butler goes in there and plays a stout game because they are ranked 21 and they're looking uh, to play in this, uh, or they're looking to to show dominance in this uh, Big East conference, which is still kind of up in the air between uh, Seton Hall and Creighton, and and uh, when it comes to the tournament time in New York. Eighth, it can go. I can see one of six teams winning it. So, it just goes to show you, it's nothing is set, uh, nothing said and done until the fat lady sings. So, I have Creighton winning by five and a half. They should win by ten, but I would not be shocked if Butler pulls this off. Um, now, let's go to number seven Maryland heading to uh, twenty-five Ohio State. Um, Sixty-seven to fifty-five was their last contest with Maryland walking up on top with a twelve-point win. Maryland shot pretty good on there. They shot way above elevation in three points, and that was kind of enough to walk away with such a, uh, a big victory. These teams shoot a lot alike with um, uh, Ohio State just a few points higher in field goal percentage and in three-point per, uh, three uh, percentage um, on their overlong stretch, and they play on the same side of the conference. So, and honestly, that means Ohio State should be able to walk away with just in a straight-up matchup, and they get the at-home, too, and it's favored two and a half, I think Ohio State's going to win this game by seven points, and that's why I'm taking Ohio State at two and a half. And for the uh, final game I'm going to go over, it's not a ranked game, but it's one that I, I saw advantage in. It's uh, Minnesota minus four heading into Northwestern. They're averaging similar teams 
like in numbers, but there's something that was so crazy. Northwestern outperformed Minnesota. Um, they had less turnovers. They had way better in uh, in paint shooting and beyond the arc, and they still lost by uh, uh, nine points in their first previous matchup. And that tells you something soft. The only thing that Minnesota did was over-rebound uh, Northwestern in the last previous matchup, and they were able to capitalize on that. And that alone was enough to pull them over a win by nine when they literally lost in like every category going into it. So I like Minnesota going into this Northwestern team that's already been shaken up a little bit and to shake them up a little bit more. Uh, they play average. I think they'll walk away with uh, six or seven points, and that's enough for me to take them on the road. And uh, so I have the Minnesota Gophers by four. Uh, that's all I got. I might add a game in later tonight. Um, I added one in on myself and I found uh, leverage and edge in Oregon by five points, and then they actually end up winning. I think I was getting five and a half or six, and they actually end up winning that game straight out in overtime against a uh, pretty good, but yet not 100% their Arizona team. And uh, Dana Altman, he actually coaches well in late season. He knows how to buckle down. The only thing that he kind of will fault their in, and that and that's uh, inside the brackets when you get into the um, uh, March Madness. But really, it's not by his fault. It's just by competition. You know, he usually gets against the better competition and gets ousted that way, just like a lot of these other great coaches do and great teams that just don't have that next level talent that only a few programs have each year to year. Well, that's all I got for today. I just think it's kind of a different kind of day, a different kind of atmosphere out there today with um, pertaining to a lot of these favorites covering. I'm not a favorite guy, but that's just where the numbers are laying, and that's where I'll lie. So um, thank you for tuning in to the Roadrunner on the, uh, today on 223-2020 College Basketball.